If you're selling services through social media, there is only one way. Uh, if you're selling services through social media, there is one thing that can make you way more money than pretty much anything else. And that thing is simply following up people. Basically, if you're selling services through social media, there is a single very simple thing that can make you a lot more money. That thing is following up people. If you're selling services through social media, there is one thing that can make you a whole lot of money. And that thing is following people up. So whenever you send somebody a message or you send somebody an offer, you send them a follow-up message or a follow-up offer or in some way try to continue the conversation. If you do that, then more people buy and more people become your customers and you make more money. And the difference in that can be absolutely staggering. The difference between one email for contacting somebody and sending three emails for contacting somebody can be double or triple the amount of people who say yes to your offer, which is pretty damn significant. And we're going to build something in Notion to help you solve this problem perfectly. And I'll walk you through the entire process of how you can build it yourself and teach you a lot about Notion and business on the way. Because why not? Now, if you don't know who I am, uh, by the way, as you can see, this video is not edited and this video is not fancy. Uh, unfortunately, everyone liked them that, ma that way better. So... I am not spending my time and energy editing videos. If you want the raw, unedited, you know, slightly weird Jordan, uh, and you're getting just that. So, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jordan Parker. I have worked as a game designer and game developer for most of my life. Then I started making IT companies and scaling IT companies and working with the biggest IT companies in the world as, you know, an IT service company. And uh, we ended up making millions and millions, hundreds of millions, in fact, for our customers. But ultimately, that started getting quite political for me and that started getting too on my nerves so i started with my partner a business helping creators build their own business help them scale their own organization build their own tech and basically make everything work and everything as profitable as, as possible because creators are generally very much underpaid because social media tries to take all the money because of course they do they are running a business as well so first of all excuse the there would be a pop-up here every five seconds it is exceptionally annoying i don't like it but uh, this is the new uh, Mac OS Sonoma, which I needed to install for my Vision Pro thingy. And because of that, it is uh, just going to annoy us a lot. But anyway, so CRMs. Now, CRMs, uh, why build one in Notion is the very first question. And a very important question, by the way. But uh, building a, a CRM in Notion, and I'll put my cheat he sheet here because I don't want to doze off too much. But building a CRM in Notion shouldn't be something that you need for a bigger business. But if you're a creator, if you're a small, if you're working by yourself or if you're freelancing, having an external CRM, having a specialized CRM system is not necessarily the best idea. I'll go through this quickly, but as you know, uh, services like uh, Salesforce, one of the biggest CRMs, they can be pretty pricey. 25 bucks a month is not nothing. Uh, and if you want the, the good stuff, you have to pay 100, which... Again, considering that Notion is way less than that, and you know, uh, then 100 bucks can be a significant percentage of your cash if you're a beginner, not perfect. And if you want to get the best stuff, which supposedly is HubSpot, you're looking at a much higher number than that, which is not very fun. And uh, to be honest, my biggest concern is not really the price, because you can make an extra 800 bucks from using a CRM correctly. That's not a big deal, that's not a problem. Let me make my face bigger. No pauses between sentences here, of course, obviously. But the problem isn't that you're pay, paying eight or even 3,000 bucks a month. If you do a good job using your CRM, you'll make that money back. That's fine. But my problem is different. It is this thing. Like, just look at this. This is Zoho CRM, one of the more affordable options. All of the CRMs look like that. They have way too many things. You would have to spend so much time learning how the CRM works. And at the end of the day, you're only going to use those skills to use this specific CRM, which for me is wasteful. Because why spend all of that time and energy learning how to use a CRM instead of spend all that time and energy to make your own CRM? 
I don't I don't get it. And you can actually start use a template and get started even faster. I'll make everything by myself so you can see the steps and the process and you can be able to replicate it and customize it more importantly for your own needs. But yeah, so we don't want those, we want notion. Alright, so I created a new page, it's empty, it doesn't have anything fancy in it. In here we wanna solve two problems. We wanna track who are we talking to, obviously, and we wanna track their follow us following them up, basically. And I will use all of the fancy notion features that they just added to make this work and be as smooth as notion would allow us to be. Maybe not everything will work from the first try. I'm not like this isn't scripted. It isn't like I'm just doing this. I'm an engineer, so I can solve every problem and I can solve it faster than most people. But that doesn't mean instantly there would be some th things that would take a second. So grab a cup of tea and relax and just watch. And or if you're not British, which like most people aren't British for some reason, uh, don't grab a cup of tea. Grab a cup of coffee like a normal person. Anyway, so let's first start with and I'll just. Ditch this. So we have four steps here. That, let me give you the structure. So that might be interesting to you. So uh, step number one, we'll make the main thing. So we, we want a table. We want to see who's who. We want to see who is in which stage of our process. And we'll make the process as well. Then I'll make a, a second table that basically allows us to use a couple of buttons and make things a little bit easier in terms of following up especially. Then I will show you how you can add things to this table conveniently from your browser because we don't want to be just doing this by hand every single time. That's very annoying. And finally, if we have time, we'll be build a table with stats and some you know, basic stuff so you can see what you did today, how many people you followed up and so on and so forth because that's kind of useful so you can you know, stay on track and stay motivated. So yeah, that's the big plan. And we'll try to go through everything as fast as possible. Let's see if we can do that. So step number one, we want this to be full width. Uh, full width pages that generally are easier to work with. And I'll make myself small and I fit neatly in the sidebar so that shouldn't be disturbing. Unfortunately, this many will be. So tough luck. Anyway, so first thing first, first things first, we want to make a table. Uh, and by table, I mean a database. So I make my databases inline because if they're inline, that means we can design the whole experience of the person, not just have a database that, that is just somewhere. We can design stuff around the database, which can be very handy because we can add buttons, we can add other databases, we can add other views and generally make this more user friendly. So this thing is going to be co called contacts DB. I like adding DB at the end of my database names because that way once I'm in search, if I search for something, I know which pages are databases and which pages aren't databases because your search view will show you everything. So we view the database and add an icon. I always add an icon and we use some people icon or something. All right, so let's do this one. Perfect, amazing. Now we will name the table. So there are two components here. We have the context database, which you can see the name of here, and you have the different views of the database. The database can contain a bunch of data, but we can view that data in different ways. And you'll see that and we use that in the CRM. But the view is currently called table, which is not very handy. So we'll call this contacts, which makes a lot more sense because we are going to start with contacts. We'll hide the name of the database because we don't want to look at that. And we'll start making this work. So let's think about, you know, a CRM. We have somebody on social media and we're talking to that person. What kind of a, this is this a table view? Interesting. Why does doesn't it have checkboxes for selecting the different items? That's interesting. And why do we have three new page buttons? That is exceptionally weird. All right, so let's, it's so strange. Let me refresh this. Yeah, that's weird. Ah, that's interesting. Is this scrolling? No. <laughs> Typically, we should have checkboxes here to select the different items and we shouldn't have three new page buttons because that doesn't make much sense. So here we we can see the standard layout, which would be, yeah, now we have those. So typically databases, Notion creates databases with three items in them. Uh, in this case, he didn't add three items because they're redoing some of the UI. You can see now those are the, those are rounded. You can see rounded angles on the checkboxes. Very fancy. That was one of the updates. Um, but uh, they it didn't add three items to the database. Instead, it added three new button items, which was nonsensical, but now we should be able to delete it and we get the same thing. So it seems that the database is, has a minimum now of three items, otherwise it doesn't render correctly. Let's try with two, two is fine. Yeah, we need at least one item. If we have zero, it, it's, it's wonky. 
All right, so that would be Jordan Parker. Cool. Okay, so we have the name. We uh, we do not need a, a, a field for the picture. I prefer having pictures. Uh, pictures make this visual and make it very easy to do. But uh, I prefer not having a picture and just using the, um, the icon feature here, uh, which we can upload something and we can go to uh, my thingy and I have my anonymous picture, which is uh, not, sorry, not uh, anonymous picture. I meant this dashing person who is definitely not me, which didn't upload for some reason, but um, that's the way Notion works. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work for no reason at all, but that's fine. My computer doesn't work as well because we like obviously are recording. Hopefully you don't see that in the recording, but I kind of doubt it. Anyway, so let's go back and uh, pick this again because obviously we want this. And it didn't work. Amazing. Let's try drag and dropping. Maybe that will work. All right. So I think my Google Drive is is acting out right now. It's not Notion. Yeah, that might be the beta version of of Mac uh, with everything not working correctly. Amazing. That's fun. Anyway, I'll restart Google Drive and uh, we'll do the crazy thing of getting my picture from somewhere else because we can do that. So I'll go to my LinkedIn. You can see that I have a, a bunch of extensions that kind of simplify the whole thing. And I'll just take my image from here. Jordan. Cool. All right. So we can upload the image from here and it should be fine. Downloads Jordan. And we don't want this as an emoji because it makes no sense. I don't want my face as an emoji. That's not a great emoji. Anyway, so we have my name and we have, you know, uh, my picture. But that's it. So this is a good start for, for CRM. We also want, in general, you, you just want to have this in most tables. And this is just notes. Notes are useful because you can uh, just jot down certain ideas about this person. And you can know, you know... What's going on with them? Like a, a, a cheat sheet of sorts of who this person is. So if you look at this, this is fine. I like the new layout feature because we can actually, instead of putting the property, uh, the notes in the property group, we can put them separately, and they can look like this, which may which makes it a lot uh, a lot easier. And you we'll later move this property group in the panel because we don't want to look at this all the time. But for the time being, if I can click apply to all pages, we will see the notes right here, which if we use this the correct way, so we use our CRM, let's add an icon, which would be a, some sort of a star or something. Um, so if we use this correctly, we'll actually make this into uh, not a table, but a list. Lists are a little bit more elegant. Uh, and also we're going to make sure that this opens in SitePeak. So we have uh, whenever you have a, a database, you can open things in SitePeak, CenterPeak or full page. SitePeak just slides them down from the, uh, from the site, which in this case makes sense because you will want to look at the CRM and be able to just look into, into a certain contact. We don't want this to just open up in full screen. And I find the south side peak is less distracting than the center peak, which is the other option, which looks like so. So I find this more distracting than the side peak. So I generally use the side peak, although with the new layouts, this is usable anyway. I prefer the side peak. One thing that I that I dislike, to be honest, is they they made the sidebar start hiding when you turn on the side peak, which can can be frustrating if you have a bigger screen. It's not no longer an issue. Anyway, so we can uh, we have a contact right now, and this contact can have a little bit of like we can have a little bit of notes. Now, thinking about the user and thinking about how you're going to use this. You're generally not going to look at the notes here. You don't want to look at the notes of 17 people and think about them all at once. So we're keeping the notes hidden, but we want to know some stuff about the, uh, we want to know some things about everyone. So let's, uh, let's add another property, which would be, uh, which would be a date and that would be last contacted. So we want to know when did we last contact this person and we might even put it here. So let's take this one out. So if you click on properties, we can show some of the properties. And here we will see that nothing actually changes because we didn't, like I didn't contact myself in this scenario. So let's say that I contacted myself on November 9th. And I full screen this because I misclicked. So here we can see November 9th, 
I contacted, you know, this person. And if you have a bunch of people, we can see when we last contacted them and that can make things significantly easier. And later we use Clo to write a fancy formula because I'm not writing this myself, it's too annoying. Uh, but basically we can, we can use Clo to write a fancy formula to make sure that, that we have some reminders and all of that jazz, which can make things a little bit easier. All right, so this is starting to, to become reasonably useful. So we, we add people here and when we contact them, we have this date. Now, we don't want to be filling the date manually because that's annoying, obviously. So we, will, we can easily just create a button. So for now, it's going to be uh, a simple button that's going to say just contact it. And here we will we'll make a simple automation, which is going to say whenever we click the button, we have a new action, which is we'll edit the last contact property to the time triggered. So this is just going to fill in the property with, you know, the time that we click the button. Let's add this here and we'll make this last. So whenever I press this, this is going to update to the current time. Uh, it's 8 o'clock in the evening, 8.20 in the evening. When we press that, it changes. If it becomes uh, 8.21, we'll press that again and it will change again and so on and so forth. This is just the start. We can make a, a few other buttons and so on and so forth. But Using this, we, we know when we last contacted the person and we can create a couple of things based on that. And by the way, because we don't actually change this by hand now, we don't need to click this and actually edit this because in general, you're not going to say, oh, I contacted this person five days ago. You should be using the CRM in real time because supposedly whenever I'm, I'm going to contact somebody, I'll just open the CRM, see who am I to contact look at the, the contacts, click on the person, just read whatever I have, and then at the end, just click the button to make sure that, that I kind of finalize the contact and probably update the notes. So let's say uh, game designer, uh, engineer, guy talks too much. That's true, very much. <laughs> and you see, anyway, so we have this. We, it's tw uh, 821, if you click it again, updates again. Very simple button, very simple automation. But this allows us to kind of simplify the process and this allows us to get rid of this field because this introduces complexity. Obviously, sometimes you, you want to do this by hand. You sometimes want to just use this date and change it. But very often you, you should just be doing this using a button because when you use it, at, uh, uh, because not having this would allow us to actually have a formula here and show more useful information than this. So let's actually m start making this happen. Uh, the first thing that we want to do for uh, though is we want to have different states for contacts because this is the the view that you're going to use when you're contacting people but you also want the view to to kind of manage the state of every single person and by manage the state I mean different people would be in different steps of the pipeline so initially you would be on LinkedIn you would be talking to somebody and you'd be sending DMs so maybe they are first in the DM stage. You're just DMing around, trying to hold a conversation, trying to understand what kind of problems they have. So whenever you approach somebody, and in, it, in theory, you can just have two ways to actually get people to buy your thing using, you know, conversations on social media. You can either approach them and say, hey, you know, what's up? Thank you for commenting on this and start a conversation, see if they have a problem that you can help with, and thus you can sell them the solution. Or you can talk to complete strangers and call DM them or call message them or call email them in some other form saying, hey, I do this thing. In both cases, you're not obviously selling to everyone because not everyone you have a problem you can help with, obviously, and also not everyone you want your specific help on their problem. Maybe they don't trust you yet. Maybe they don't want to solve the problem yet. Maybe they have the, another random reason. It doesn't matter. The point is not everyone you want to buy. But... We want to know in which stage we are in the discussion because depending on which stage we are on, we will have a different behavior. We want to do different things. So, for example, initially, we uh, you, you might decide, hey, I don't want to just call DM strangers because that doesn't work on every social network. For example, on LinkedIn and Instagram, people are, uh, not LinkedIn, sorry, on Twitter and Instagram, people are kind of getting tired of this. And if you just send them cold messages, people might not react too well to that. So what you can do, Although, you know, just code DMing can work, but what you can do is you can first engage with their content. So we say, first step number one is we want to engage. Let's, let's write this step. Steps. So, number one, we want to engage 
with their content. Number two is we want to send a DM. Number three is we want to set a call. And number four, we want to make an offer. After that, and we we'll just call this a call. Then we want to offer them something. Then we have negotiation, Negoti negotiate, and then we have close. And you can close people and you can lose them and all that. It doesn't matter. And we have churn. Anyway, and you can do client, churn, and you know, client means they, they purchased and started working with you, churn means they stopped working, they're their ex client, whatever. And and here this is the this is kind of the uh, uh, this is kind of the the main th the main game of the 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 main structure of the game. We want to get people through those stages, and the more people you go through get through those stages, the better you do, the better your business does, the more money you make. Very very straightforward stuff. But if we want to make this efficient, we have to actually track who's who's where and not remember everyone. Because if you have 15 people that you're talking to, that is doable. But if you have 500, that's not doable. And you will start messing things up and you're going to mix them up. That's why stuff like having notes here can be essential. And also, by the way, you have the whole page. You can just write structured, a structured document here with whatever you want. I'll show you a couple of things that can be handy here. But yeah, so... All right, we have we have this whole thing. All right, so this now needs to uh, this now needs to become you know something useful. So uh, we can do I don't know do we can add a stage that says uh, I don't know, do not contact or something like this whatever because we can we just want to hide some people. But yeah, so this is the worst stage, not talking to somebody. Oh no. Actually, it's uh, like people get very fr flustered when they're contacting people and sending DMs for the first time, but it's actually very useful. Like if you get somebody to say yes, that's all obviously great. Like you, you get new business, you're going to work with someone new, they're going to get your, your service. Amazing. Like this is cool. But the other, the next best answer is sa them saying no. Because when they say no, you know, okay, I shouldn't put any more effort there. I should do something else. And that's amazing because... You know how to you know how to structure your work. You know how to prioritize. It's a it's actually very useful. And when people say maybe, that's when you waste a lot of time because you then have to check fifteen times to see if they're if they're ready, which is isn't as productive. So yeah, so we have this uh, and say I don't know uh, said no, whatever. Okay, so we have some rough stages. Let's make those stages a reality. And luckily we can see them still here. And this is gonna be a select. We don't need a multi-select because we like we only have people in a single stage at any given time, uh, and we will just call this stage. And now we're gonna add all the stages. Let's see if we can paste them. That's interesting. Absolutely not. Not really. Um, let's see if we can hack this like so. All right. Uh, the client, we use the client, and then we'll do let's see if we do commas. Nope. Well, we have to do this manually, like normal people. Uh, annoying, but it's fine. So we have engage, we have uh, send DM, we have a uh, call scheduled. You can do, you can be more granular, it can be like uh, call rescheduled and you can have a, a bunch of other things. I would just note them in a note because they're not as common, they're not, like they're not the norm. And being too nitpicky about who were scheduled, what call can just bias you in the conversations. It's not generally necessary. All right, so we have offered or offered. Okay, let's rename this offered. Then we have negotiating. I'll actually skip the negotiating part. You can just do that after. You can keep people in the offered part. It, it's going to simplify things a little bit. Uh, we can skip the close part because that make like that means that they're a client. Then we have churned or ex client, and finally we have the client. Cool. Okay, so we have our stages. Now, let's actually make this a little bit more visual because obviously. Here we can show them in the table, and that can work. Like here, we can we can show the stages, and you can see. Okay, this person is engaged, and this we send a DM. But this is very difficult to track. 
Because if you have a list of 15 people, you're just going to see like 15 little labels of text, very difficult to see and focus on a, a specific stage. Usually what you'll do is you'll sit down in your DMs in Instagram, for example, or in, on LinkedIn, and you want to do DMs for an hour. And if you have a, a mixed list of people in all the different stages, that's going to be very hard. So we probably shouldn't do that. And instead, we should just get rid of the stage and make a new view for this. So we will make a view and it's going to be a board view. So there is this this thing called we'll do the contacts database. Perfect. All right. So we'll hide the title again. And this is going to be called stages view. Cool. And what this is called is actually a Kanban. This is Japanese methodology for doing tasks. And basically, we have a several columns. Every column is a state, usually to do, done, or to do in review and done, or something like this. And then you basically move the different uh, nodes, because you do it with post-it notes on the wall, usually. You, do it, uh, you move the post-it notes through the stages. Here, we're using it with a few more stages, because it's not just to do and done. It's, it's all of the different stages that we created. But it's kind of the same idea. All right, so card size, medium, card preview, none. Database title, we don't care. Group by stage, that's exactly what you want. Covering columns is generally useful, so you know what's what. Uh, page icon, we want to show because we customize the page icons here. And let's basically show all of them. Show group. Actually, the, we don't care about the decline state. Uh, this should be called engaged, so we'll show that. We don't care about the excellent phase, and we'll show the send DM. Okay, so this currently doesn't make much sense because it's out of order. So let's let's kind of organize it a little bit. So we have engaged. That literally means you engage with the person. You you basically went in there, you know, on their timeline. You liked a couple of things. You commented a couple of times. You can have several steps to this. You can be wrote, I wrote comment one, and then I wrote comment two, and then I wrote comment 16,072, whatever. You can have as many stages for this as you want. I'm making one because I don't exactly know your process. You can do this by liking three comments and uh, liking three things and, and writing one comment. You can do this by commenting on their account for an entire week. Like it depends on your own preference and how warm you want people to be before you actually start talking to them. All right, so we engage with them or they engage with us. This can be for inbound messages, so they can be the ones engaging. Then you send them a DM, then you schedule a call, then you offer them, and then they become a client. The way you do this is, uh, and actually let's make an, uh, uh, actually I won't do this. So here we can have another group, which is called, I don't know, uh, not engaged like this is people who we do, haven't even started the process with the problem with this is that the crm becomes too pedantic and too complicated so my suggestion is you you add people to your crm the moment you start engaging with them because this category is going to be the biggest one like all of the categories are going to go smaller the more you go to the to the left you have more people you haven't engaged than people you have engaged more people you have engaged than people you had sent dms to and so on and so forth so we wouldn't want that because this is going to be a huge list that you have to maintain and add a, a, a ton of people to. That's going to make things very difficult. So instead, I will assume that you just engage, uh, you already engage with everyone that, that's added to CRM and you get rid of this page. Perfect. Okay. So right now we have engaged, then we have sent TM, we have call scheduled, and, and then we have a client. Uh, and offered for some reason is not here. Perfect. Motion is being wonky. The UI is, is getting uh, is not very stable. I have some comments on how they're running and their engineering team. I've run several engineering teams. I hired several hundred engineers, and uh, that's not how you do it, especially in an enterprise company. They're scaling. They're they're, they're they were started just until yesterday, and now they're becoming those you know this big corporation. It's a tough transition, but yeah, lots of rookie mistakes. Anyway, so. We add somebody there engaged. You you send them a DM, you move them to the send DM. You just grab the card and move it as if it was a post-it note, but it's not a post-it note because it's digital. And you can see it on your phone and your tablet and whatever, which is kind of cool. So we send them a DM, then we go schedule a code, then we offer, and then we make them a client and so on and so forth. Now, that would have been a perfect CRM. That would be the perfect way to manage your contacts if 
people actually reply to you every single time you send them a message. But sometimes you would be here, you would go on a call, you would be like you would go on a call, you would talk to them, they would be super excited. Like, yeah, man, I'm starting tomorrow. Uh, everything is perfect. I have all, I have the money. The the prices are good. The service is amazing. I love working with you. That's gonna be amazing. And then the call ends. You close the call. Then you send them an email, you know, with the, with a Stripe link, and they don't pay, or they don't, or they just ghost you with the last little detail that you need. So you need to send more messages. You need to be put like you need to be contacting people more than once. That's not because people are are bad or anything like this. It's because people are busy. They have a thousand things to do, and missing an email or missing a message is very very easy. Like just think of all of your messages. Like how many of your emails you know by heart. If you open your email box and I ask you, what's the third email from yesterday? Can you give me that answer now? Probably not. And that's what most people are acting like. And because of that, and because of the massive amount of messages we get, we have to send other messages to remind them. And that's okay. It's not offensive. It's not annoying. It's just normal. So uh, this so far is fine, but we need more. We need to, to actually make this thing work. We need to make this last contact that date something that is actually, you know, serving our our needs so to speak okay so first of all let's see uh what else do we need to make this this happen the first thing is we want to uh, we want to know when we last contacted the person but we also want to know when do we contact the person next so this this is kind of important so how we do this is we basically just create another date property which i'll just duplicate this one because it's easier Oh, it's automatically hitting and hidden. Amazing. And this is going to be. Come on. Uh, and this is going to be called next contact. So we have last contact. And let's make it consistent because this is kind of making things sexier. Not always hide, always show, sorry. And this is going to be always show as well. So we, we have next contact and we have last contact. <sighs> That's great. Now we have in some way track how many times you contacted the person and based on how many times you contacted the person contact the person less often because we can do a, a very easy way to do this and i'll show it to you immediately is all right so we press the contacted button when once we press the contacted button we will update the next contact so we'll go edit property edit next contact and then you do a custom formula so we'll do time triggered and then we'll, we want to add date add and we'll do time triggered, and then we'll add two, and then we'll say days. Easy, super easy, right? So we press contacted, and this adds two days, and we have to contact the person again in two days. That's amazing, but if you contact somebody every two days forever, that's gonna be horribly annoying for them, because they'll be like, okay, bugger off, I don't care. Like, I, I, I talked to you the other day, nothing changed in two days. Like. You know, I told you I don't have the money, I need to close this project, and this is going to take me three months. Obviously, you know, I I don't want this immediately. You know, that that's what happens. So we don't want to be as pushy. So to make sure that those contact, that those next contacts, because sometimes you just edit this manually, obviously, but uh, to make sure that this button actually sets this to something sane and reasonable, we're not using just a random number. We're going to use a little bit of math. We're going to make it a little bit fancier. So to do this and to make this correctly, we're, we're actually going to start tracking how many times we have contacted the person. So we'll add a number here, and this is going to be number of times contacted. Uh, of times contacted, contacted. All right, so this would usually just be zero, right? So this is gonna be zero in, in general, but we wanna, we wanna use this button to manage everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do edit automation and we're going to edit this property as well. So what we want is every time we press the button, every time we contact the person, we make sure that this thing is, you know, uh, this thing is updated to the actual number of times contacted. So this is gonna be a uh, number This page number of times contacted plus one let's see if we can do this now this is a test because I'm not sure if this is gonna work if this is empty because obviously we cannot one if this was zero 
and that would, 0 plus 1 would be 1, but this is nothing. Can we add 1 to nothing? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right, so when you click this, both of those dates update, and we get a, a different number here. So let's clear the dates and make sure that everything works correctly. Bam. We click this, all of the numbers change, and everything is cool. So let's clean this up. Boom, perfect. What I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, is I'm going to add a button that's going to be a cleanup button. This is a temporary button. We're going to get rid of this one, by the way. Like, we don't need this. But it's going to make life a little bit easier. So we're going to uh, select the next contact and do this. <laughs> uh, we're going to select last contact and do this. And we're going to the number of times contacted and do this. Let's see if this works. Perfect. So wh whenever you, you click this, we just get rid of everything because it's easier. Cool. Okay. So this is fine. We click the button and this automatically updates everything. But what's happening is we're counting how many times we contacted the person, but like it's not enough still, obviously. Like uh, we want to change the next contact date based on how many times we contacted this. So let's say we contact the person and then we want to message them the next day, but then we want to wait a bit. So we want to kind of calculate this weight based on math and this number. So the the bigger this number, the more the more times we're gonna we're like the more we we're going to to be waiting. Uh, so here I usually like using Fibonacci numbers, but I'm not sure uh, we can calculate those uh, in Notion too easily. Let's see, because it's just annoying. Like it's uh, a little bit annoying to, to write. I'm not sure if we can get this generated with Cloud. Let's see. So let's do Notion functions and let's see. Write me a function that generates. Let's see if it can do this. Because I won't be bothering, like, I would just use squares and all that if, if we have to. It's easier. But let's see. And to number position. Okay. Interesting. That might work. Let's see. Let's add a formula. And let's see if that will work. Okay, so obviously we don't have position. So we'll have to use uh, times contacted. 21. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. That was easy. Thank you, Claude. All right. So you can see that the formula, it's a little bit, like, I wouldn't sit down and write this right now, but you can see it's it's not a terribly complicated com formula. It's just a normal formula, but in Notion, it's kind of ugly because we don't have the new lines, but yeah. Anyway, so um, is this perfect? Let's see. If we have zero, obviously, we will have, we'll have zero here. Then we want to wait a day. Then we want to wait another day. Then you want to wait two days, three days, five days, eight days, 13, 21, 34. Okay, that's perfect. So what we, we want to do is this is fine, but it's it will get too wild. Like we don't want to wait for a year before contacting somebody again. We want to put an, uh, an upper limit to this. So let's, uh, let's move this to Visual Studio Code and clean this up a little bit. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, cap it. So we're we're going to actually let's see if Claude can cap it for us. That's that's yeah. perfect. Can you cap that? Uh, perfect. And this is the formula that I ended ended up. Come on, typing using, and we'll paste this one. Can you cap it to? Uh, I don't know, let's say 45 days max. Can you give me a number, but cap it to 45 max. All right, so by the way, why Cloud and not ChatGPT? Because Cloud is better. When it comes to engineering work, programming, or when it comes to writing, which is the only two, two things that I use AI for extensively, uh, you just get better results with Cloud. And this is a, uh, this is a Cloud project. To train this, because Cloud by by default doesn't know what what to what to do. Is we have uh, I have two files here. One of them is the Notion functions from the Notion website, and the other one is uh, Mr. Thomas Frank. Uh, Notion functions has made an insanely detailed resource about Notion functions. 
it's from 2023, but it is stupidly detailed. Like you can see, Ark just doesn't want to load this thing. It's so huge. It has so much stuff in it. So I basically got this. I cleaned it up a little bit. So I clicked inspect. I deleted a bunch of things from here and I left just this part. And then I saved this and put it into cloud as training data. Very, very, you know, I'm very thankful, Thomas. That, that, that is actually very useful. And using this cloud can actually make a lot of the work really, really easily. But yeah. Okay, so cloud completely misunderstood us. We're, we're just going to do this by, I, I'm just going to do this because it's easier. All right, so we have two ifs. Uh, and then we have for one and two, we just give us, uh, give the initial number. And then we give the uh, power, which is, which is the, come on, there's so many new lines here. It's way too much. All right, and let's put this on a single line because that would be a little bit cleaner. Cool, okay, so. Perfect, okay, so this is the, uh, this is gonna be the, Actually, number and that would be the actual value here. Cool. And now we need to return something, so I'll just return the number and let's see if I messed something up and made a typo somewhere. It seems that I did. That's annoying. What did I mess up? That should be oh, this should be let's. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now we actually have two variables. This is uh, some of the new Notion syntax. Uh, we basically can define variables in our uh, in our formulas now, which can make the code a little bit cleaner. So we now have the Fibonacci number. Then we want to do um, max, and we want to do the Fibonacci number, and then we want to do, I don't know, let's say 35 days. Uh, oh, sorry, min. Yes, so we want to do uh, the, we want to do the um, minimum of, of the number that we get in 35. Why, the, why 35? Because contacting people once every... Uh, let's actually make it a, an even weirder number, because 35 people can maybe probably try, but 37 is a very weird number. Like, you would co I would contact you if we do... So if we if I contacted you again in 37 days, that would be 37 days from now... That would be 18th of December. So this today is a Monday, and I would contact you again on Wednesday in a month and a half, which is a super weird thing. Like it, people won't find a pattern in this; it's just gonna feel random, which is perfect. Cool. All right. So uh, we we take the minimum number here. So the Fibonacci number will eventually get super high. We'll get like 347 or something like this, which is just insane. Like we don't want to wait a year to contact somebody. That doesn't work. Like they will just forget who you are. So if we want to cap it to something reasonable, 37 sounds fine. Uh, and this will actually give us something very nice. So w w the first time we contact them, it just gives us a date that is uh, in one day. Then it's going to be in one day again. Then it's going to be in three days. Then it's going to be in uh, three days, sorry. Then, then it's five days. Then it's eight, 13, 21, 34, 37. And then every time we contact them, we only, we only are going to get 37, which makes a lot of sense. Perfect. Now, we actually have to reflect this here because the next contact is still sitting at November the 13th, which isn't perfect. So for to do this, we actually do, uh, we're going to take this formula. Okay. And we're going to edit this property. And here we're going to use this thing, which is basically perfect all right so we have the minimum number here and what we are going to do is do this oh wait this is uh, this is the wrong thing that was a mistake yeah this is the uh, times contacted on this page number of times contacted plus one this is the, I, I clicked the wrong field Never mind. So the, we don't want to change the, the, the number. We want to change the next contact date. So this is going to look like this. Come on. All right. So we, uh, we, we have our calculation, but this won't work so, because this is 
the, we have to put everything in the let's function. This is how the notion formulas work. We can have more than one thing. So this is going to be uh, capped. And here we're going to use the capped variable. So what that does is that should be fine. Data, they triggered, number is not defined. Which number is not defined? Oh yeah, this is not defined because we copied it. And this page, number of times contacted. Perfect. All right, let's see. Okay, let's clean up, press it again. November 11th, cleanup. Oh wait, the cleanup button is now buggy because it is using the it's not cleaning up the Fibonacci number. Okay, so this is doing... Next contact is December 18th. And it does December 18th every single time. That's strange. Okay, maybe we, ne we need to do this the, op the opposite thing as well. And actually cut this in the other direction too. So let's see what we have here. And let's see, so we have the minimum number of Fibonacci in 37, yes. So what's happening right now is because we still haven't done the, uh, we still haven't edited this, the, the order is incorrect. So because we, we haven't added one, the Fibonacci number is empty. So we're, we're getting the minimum value here between empty and 37. And 37 is smaller than nothing, like the, not even a number, so we get 37. So we immediately go go to the highest range. So instead of doing this, by reversing the two actions, we should get it correct. So first contact, next day. Second contact, next day. Next uh, two days in, in the future. Three days in the future. Five, seven, whatever. And you can see that this goes gradually higher. And at a certain point, it just caps to 37 days later, which is exactly what we want. All right, so we can just get rid of this one. It doesn't matter. Like we already put the formula in the, in the correct place. Perfect. All right. So now this is starting to, to become reasonable, like we're, we're getting to, to something that makes sense. So what we want to do here is this contacted button should actually be in the stages view and the stages view should be on top. Uh, no, it should be on the bottom, Never mind. Uh, we f will add the property here, which would, which would be the contacted property. So whenever you're ready, you just click contacted and that's it. Uh, or actually, no, we can even hide this here have an even better idea we'll just put it in the in the top in the top function but this thing shouldn't shouldn't give us the like uh, this this part shouldn't be every contact because that doesn't make sense it's not very useful instead what, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and this is going to be contact today so this contact today thing we're actually going to filter it let's just let me change the icon let's put a calendar here uh, this is a single day calendar, very logical, perfect. And we're going to do a filter. And this filter would say next contact is not this week, it is today. It is start date is relative to today is after yesterday. So if it is after yesterday, that means it's today. Or we can do just start date is today which should also work it's less reliable to be honest I have had a, a little less success so this next contact is currently set on December let's clean it up perfect all right so the, the next contact is on November 12th so contact today what do we have here new form yeah, whatever we don't want a new form so we have contact today we have nobody if let's say my next contact w was today instead, and this was on the 10th, then we would have something that showed my name here. And what happens is that uh, because of how this works, we are actually getting this to a very, very neat spot, which is uh, because we are uh, because we're only seeing the people that we should be contacting today, and let's hide the filters, that makes it a lot easier. Because right now, Whenever I contact, uh, I click the contacted button, I'm going to disappear from this list because the, con the next contact date is going to change. So I click this, I'm gone now. I'm here, you know, in, uh, let's, let's make this all contacts. So I'm here in all contacts, and this is cool, but I'm not here because I don't need to contact myself again, obviously. So this is, this is fantastic. Now, 
there is a problem with this still because maybe we we can contact somebody a bunch of times but then we uh, we want to contact them for a different reason because the the dynamic of this thing changes so whenever i change to uh, i move the stage to one of the next stages what happens is i am not i'm no longer contacting them in the same pattern in the same way so let's say i'm talking to uh, we're talking uh, going back and forth to actually uh, schedule the call and I contact you one, two, three, five times and we eventually set, set up the call. When when we get to the offer stage, I might have to contact you a bunch of times again. But in this situation, I don't want to start from however many days I had last time. I want to start from scratch. I want to start from tomorrow. I want to start anew. So what, what we need to do here to make this completely automated, we want to create an automation. If you don't have an automation, what, what we what we can do is we can actually save the last stage and do a bunch of other things with this contacted button to actually update this correctly. But the easiest way to do this, which will require the pro version of Notion, although again, if you save the last stage in the uh, in this page, you can basically use this button, update the stage, and then update the contacted and, and just reset this number of times or whatever. Uh, so I'll show you both ways real quick. So whenever any pr uh, property edited, can we do, ah, that's, actually I'll show you just the, the free way because this one is kind of clunky. Anyway, so we'll, we'll actually do another property and that's gonna be, uh, we'll duplicate the stage Oh, I'll actually use it just a text because I don't want to have duplicates of the of this. This is going to be called last stage, and this this is just going to be the the name of the stage. So, when whenever we we click contacted, what we're going to do is we are going to change this property which is called last stage, and we're going to change this into uh, this page dot stage, right? So whenever you click this, we basically get the stage written down here. That makes a lot of sense. That makes things easier. But one thing we can do is we can edit property. Uh, sorry, we can edit this property. And what we can do is whenever we are updating this number, the number of times contacted, we can say if last this page, last stage equals uh, this page dot stage. If if this is the same thing, then wait. Uh, then we want to do the normal thing and just increase this by one. Otherwise, we want to do zero, right? So if we if uh, if we were on the or actually just do it as one. So if we are or were on the same page, then we increase this by one. If we're on a different stage, we just set it to one. Let's see if this works. I think there there will be a little bit of a bug here. All right. So when we change the stage and click this, all right, perfect. Then we change the stage and we go X client contacted bam. So whenever you change the stage, this works neatly. Now I want to uh, I want to do one other thing just in case, which is uh, this would have a problem if the if the last stage is empty. So if the last stage is empty, we just want to we just want to assume that this was a uh, this was a different stage. So we'll do uh, this page last nope last stage, and this is going to be this. Come on, this yeah. Uh, we'll do empty. If this is empty, or this page last stage is equals is equal to the stage yes so what that does is if this was empty it's go it's gonna fill it in and just increase it normally if we don't have anything here we don't want this uh, we don't want this number to be changing because that means that we just started with this client at this spot so this is gonna work normally but if we change the stage something different it's gonna reset basically anyway so using all of this 
we we can hide this one we don't care about this one uh we can hide this one because we don't care about this one we can hide this one because we have it in a neat t table below or we can just put it somewhere uh neatly we don't we don't need the the uh, this one so we have the next contact last contact and a very neat button that says contacted so these those are kind of the main things that we care about this the other two properties we we generally don't uh we don't really uh we don't really use so let's pin a couple of properties. Let's do next contact because that's one that one is important. Let's let's pin last contact and let's pin the contacted button. We genuinely want those. Then uh for the stage, let's do the uh stage as a separate thingy. So we have the stage. We'll put it below the notes because you you're you're not going to be changing it for care, but it's useful for uh for just viewing this and then we'll hide the rest of the properties because we ge don't generally use them and if i can see my notion thank you very much perfect cool so now what we have is what we can add somebody then we can just move them around and as we move them around we can click when we contact them and whenever we contact them uh we uh we we reset them and basically track when we should contact them next which can be very very handy because if you know when to contact them next, we can follow them up and everything is kind of easy. And if you keep this at the contact today view, that makes things significantly e easier still. Because the only people that you're going to be looking is the people that you're currently talking to. And you're going to be t looking at the people that you're contacting today, which makes things, you know, so much easier. Now, how do we add people to this? Because this is already a functional CRM. We don't need to do that much more things to make this functional. This is already fine. But... Uh, how do we add people to this? I'll show this and we won't get into the super tracking stuff because the super tracking is going to take us even more time, which is going to suck. Uh, and we're already at like 56 minutes. All right. So how do we add people? Instead of using the, uh, instead of adding them manually, which would suck, what we're going to do is we, we're going to go to a profile. Let's go to Kubo's profile. Kubo is a cool dude. Um, and let's add him. To add him, we're going to use an extension, extension which is called Save to Notion. I'll move it here so you can see the whole thing because we have this nasty pop-up. And this extension is free. You go to uh, Home, uh, Save to Notion, and you install that. If you don't have, if you don't have that, then you can use the default thing, the default Notion extension. This is not the default. This is a different thing. This is a different extension altogether. But what that allows us to do is we can create a new form and we can actually connect this form to my Notion, hopefully, not uh, my editor's Notion. And here we can actually fi find a, a specific database. Let's do clients. Let's see if it finds it because it takes a while. Let's do this. Yeah, this is, uh, it's a little bit funky uh, in this regard. I'll show you the different database. This takes a, a moment to actually reflect because I have hundreds of databases in my Notion. If you are not a super mega power user and you don't have hundreds of databases, you should be fine and it should appear immediately. In any case, I'll just use contacts. I have a different, oh, we have, we have one, perfect. This is the one, this is the correct page even. All right, so we, we wanna add him to the contacts database and we're currently making this as a reusable template. So the 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 name is going to be the page title, probably. Uh, the image would be the main image, or we can pick the outer avatar. The content we don't want to save the web page content, and we don't have a template for people because we didn't make a template. We we should be able to click this, click contacts database, and it's going to add pretty much everything here. So we see his name. We have this slash LinkedIn, which is kind of annoying. We don't have an image though. We should be able to select the image and just click here and that would be fine. But I think we can just improve the template a little bit. So this is the final version that we would want. So let's edit this a little bit and let's do alter and that, and let's do alter avatar and see if that works. It's obviously not going to update from the first go. Absolutely not. Absolutely doesn't work at all. So let's do, uh, Data on web page and just pick the data and pick his name. All right. And let's do date on web page again and then pick the picture. Perfect. 
Uh, this is the image and this. Okay, so this, in this case, it should work. Perfect. So now when, when you go to anyone's profile, let's test it with Diana's profile, for example. So you go to Diana's profile, you click your extension, you click your the template that you made, and it again doesn't work at all because the date on page is not reliable as well. That's very annoying. I got to I got to be honest with you. But uh let's see if we can do Oh wait. No, no, no. I I I messed up in this in this case. Yeah. Shit. Right. That uh, that, that was a mistake on my part because I wasn't in the correct page and that and that makes it made sense for this to not work. So let's select the avatar again. Let's save and go back. And let's see if we can get this to work. I'll refresh and then we'll turn on the extension and see if we can make it work. Add contact. It get, gets the name, it doesn't get the avatar. Worst case, you have to pick the avatar by yourself. But in, in any case, once you click save, it should appear here in the database. If I selected the correct database, because you have so many, so many databases. Let's refresh and give it a second. So I'm sure it appeared in Notion. Which is lagging right now, of course. Because obviously at the end of the video, the Notion is it is supposed to lag and not work correctly. Ah, isn't that fun? All right. So let, while we give Notion a second, let's see if this is if we can actually get this up and running uh, so we have content page is content image let's see if we can do, do user avatar no it still doesn't doesn't allow us to to pick up the avatar correctly let's maybe see we have page screenshot which doesn't work uh, main image what do we uh, main image might might select her banner or something no it doesn't do anything it depends. On some websites, this work, works really well. So I had a lot of uh, success on some websites. On other websites, it doesn't really work too well. All right. Let's see. Yeah, in theory, something like this should work. But again, it might be a little bit wonky. So what that does, it, it uses a very sophisticated CSS selector to select this. I have like three extensions changing the code here. It can be messy. But in any case, this should... Yes, perfect. The issue is that it added the image in the, in the wrong spot, which is something that we don't want. So let's uh, change this and add a field, which would be the page icon. And then let's use, we don't want this. We actually want this to be the outer avatar. Uh, and not only the outer avatar, we want to do date on web page and we want to pick the avatar. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so this actually adds the correct icon now. But what I'm thinking now is our CRM misses something very crucial, which is how do we contact the person? Like right now we don't save their URLs. So what we can do is we can add a couple of extra fields. Nothing super fancy, but we can add a URL. And this is going to be called LinkedIn. And we're going to add another URL, which this one is going to be called uh, uh, Twitter. And we can add another URL, and this one can be called, I don't know, website. Cool? All right. So let's customize the layout once again and just add all of those here because we generally just want to see them because that would make life easier. So let's do LinkedIn. We'll do one more, which would be... Uh, oh, this is, this is trying to add a new one. Let's do... Can we? No, we can't drag and drop, of course. Let's do Twitter and then let's do website. Cool. It's kind of spacey. I, d I don't like that we can't create new property groups, but whatever can we do? Like this, is, this isn't something that we can actually, like we can't do much about this. Well, what one thing we can do is we can probably just show this and kind of uh, just get rid of some of those. Yeah, we'll just remove those from the layout. And yeah, it's less elegant than I would have wanted, but 
it is what it is cool and yes and we have this URL here which I don't want perfect all right so this the extension added the URL which is something that we don't care for perfect okay so we have this I full screen this for some reason all right so we have this let's change our extension a little a little bit and let's see if it immediately added this so we yes we have the LinkedIn which is the URL which is what we want and uh, can we get the website as well contact info maybe we can so let's do and she has her old, old website this is our old company that's not something that we want here let's pick the data and let's see if that will work perfect so now when we use this and let me delete her prof uh, her page from here because we don't want that let's do this close pop up perfect so we have her picture we have everything and everything looks nice the uh, we have the link uh, we have her linkedin we have her website everything is here the only thing that that we we don't have is she's currently not you know here in the stages view now because we want to add people once we already engage them we need one extra change which is we're going to edit this uh, one last time and add one other field which is going to be the uh, stage and we want the stage of engaged so we want by default to add people to the engaged state and unfortunately we can't select the icon automatically which is a bummer but whatever can you do cool all right so now if we do this template we have the linkedin we have right website yeah website doesn't doesn't pick it up so you can actually go here and copy it but i won't do this i'll just uh add our uh parker labs website because it's way cooler cool see so, very nice language and everything so when we save when we when we open up notion you will see her here and we will see that she doesn't have a last contact date and she's not in contact today and what we can do is we can actually uh just add the contact button here in the properties not not filter sorry that's unnecessary uh, it doesn't allow me to delete this delete filter yes thank you and we're gonna add the contact button so right now what we can do is we can uh we can send her a dm click contact it and and now everything is done because what is going to happen is that her contact her this sh let's put next contact here because this is confusing let's put next contact you can see ah come on don't mess my order you can see that the next contact is actually in on november 12th which is tomorrow so tomorrow she's going to pop up here and then you can you know contact her again and then click the buttons you contact with her again and then you wait you have a conversation and so on and so forth and you push her through this through the crm until eventually she becomes a client and if she doesn't become a client, she beca be, uh, we put her in this decline section, which should be we should be able to hide, uh, and we should have the same thing uh, in the ex client section, which we should also hide. Yeah, Notion added uh, made them out to show for for whatever reason, but yeah, and no stage is just you know irrelevant. We can put this at the very start, but I wouldn't generally just keep heap people here. I would keep everyone in some stage but yeah so you don't generally want to track the people who declined you like you you want to have a list of them sure so you know what to do but in general you don't like you don't want them just cluttering your screen and that's it and once you start filling those lists and you start moving people around you know what's happening and it is you know pretty straightforward to what to do and here we, what we can do is we can do the next contact date and actually show that and if you want to be a little bit fancy you can add one other property which which we're going to hide by the way because we don't care let's put the websites at the top because it's a little bit more orderly uh we'll, we'll add a formula and this is going to be contact again uh this is next contact label and this is going to say contact again in next contact days um what was it date range uh, no not date range uh dates subtract date between yes date between uh would be now 
and next contact uh, in days yes and we'll do an if here so that would be if is zero then we say today and this is going to be very messy so we're going to use a variable now so let's do uh, let uh, next contact and then we do this and then we contact again in next contact is not defined what do you mean oh wait this is yeah that makes sense Uh, this should be like so. Cool. Contact again in next contact. So here we can do if next contact is zero, then we do uh, the contact today. And if otherwise we do, we, we're going to use this string, which is going to be in next contact plus days uh, and we have uh, an extra comma somewhere equals zero then contact today that seems correct actually i missed one oh yeah i missed one at one closing bracket so because next contact is today we got this and here, instead of having this just random date that doesn't mean much, we can just hide this, not open the property, hide this, and then use this label. And you can see contact again in minus seven days. So if you want to be fancy, we can we can make the label work for days in the past. But yeah, uh, this is a, an issue of the display. So what we're going to do is next contact is not equal to zero. It is bigger than zero. Uh, Yes, perfect. So if the, the next contact is lower than one day, we'll, we'll have contact today. If it is higher than one day, we'll have... Uh, this is incorrect still. So we need to do this the other way around. So we want to do next contact minus now, not the other way. Perfect. Okay, so we can see that Diana, her next contact is on the 12th. So we are slightly off in our calculation, which is next contact yeah so we're technically less than 24 hours from when we, we when we should contact her so this this makes sense we'll do hours instead and let's do uh, less than i don't know 14 hours in next 24 ah, come on we want to round this up now round in one day it's not perfect, uh, like, but you can see that once we do this, we should get this to be a higher number. So we get in five days, in eight, 13, 20, and then we stick at 37 and it stays at 37. And here we have contact today. Then we click contact and it says contact again in one day, then in two days, in three days, whatever. You get the idea. And in, in this form, you know, you kind of understand how this works. The only thing that I did that I currently don't kind of dig perfectly is that last contact should be today. Next contact, let's put this at uh, next contact label. Let's hide this one because we don't care about this property. And this one, let's put this to zero. Okay, so let's put next contact as 12th. Cool. Okay. So you can see that this actually kind of makes sense. So right now, whenever we, we press contact it, we are actually getting, you know, increasing delays on when you should contact the person and they end up at 37 because 37 is a huge number of time of days. And if people wait that long, they'll just forget about you. 
and you know that's not perfect so you move people around in the stages and you can see by the way if we move the stage and click contact this resets to one again this is because of this quirk in the in the button that we added that makes sure that whenever we, we press it 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 actually remembers the last stage and resets this this is a little bit easier than than doing this with an automation because for the automation we actually have to create a separate view and then we have to hide this view and so on and so forth but this so far is actually very useful already the only thing that that is left is we can create a separate page in which we can track how many people have we uh, how many people have we contacted t today and track a, a few more stats which we can do another time like this isn't isn't critical for this this is already a very functional thing so yeah i hope this is useful and you know enjoy